Hey, what's up, everybody? So, I wanted to do a quick follow up video to talk about the Azrael Clary five year relationship with R. Kelly. Of course, as you know, as I already, already stated, and if you haven't heard, she's doing a video series about her relationship with R. Kelly, right? Now, I think when I made my video, a lot of people just got bent out of shape and they got really upset with me because I told them basically to be careful when you go to her page. And I told them, basically, if you go to her page and you start stalking her and you start bullying her, basically what's going to happen is that you're going to open yourself up to an arrest or an investigation, right? And, you know, some people really took this a long way. Look, of course you have freedom of speech. Of course you can say just about almost anything you want to say so long as you're not saying it in a way that it's meant to stalk a person, right? You know, before I get too deep in this, I'm just going to play a video, which is actually coming from a lawyer. Now, me, myself, I'm not a lawyer, and everybody should know that now, but if you don't know, now you know. So I'm going to play this clip from a lawyer so you can kind of hear what he has to say about stalking and cyberbullying and all that good stuff, and hopefully we'll put it in context, and I'll come back and I'll talk about more about cyberbullying and i'll talk about freedom of speech a little bit more and i'll talk about the limitations of freedom of speech so just check it out today we're going to explain illinois laws regarding cyber stalking so we'll talk about what stalking is generally and then what cyber stalking is and then we'll talk about what to do if you are being stalked online or in person so stalking generally uh, before we get into online stalking, is knowingly engaging in behavior that would cause a reasonable person to fear for his or her own safety or the safety of others. Now, online stalking is a little bit more specific. This includes repeated unwanted social media contact, and this might be direct messaging, it might be comments, replies, or any other social media communication. Just like any type of other stalking, it requires that the person making the contact do so knowingly and is knowingly engaging in online behavior that would cause reasonable anxiety or fear in the victim. Cyber stalking has the same penalties as traditional stalking and this can rise to felony level penalties. So if you are being stalked on social media or outside of social media in, in outside of the online world, there's several steps that you should take. Uh, most importantly, do whatever is necessary to protect yourself. Uh, this might include informing law enforcement, which is usually the first thing you should do. You should tell your family and friends what's going on. Consider staying with your family and friends uh, so that if someone is stalking you, they don't necessarily know where you are physically at the time. Block any unwanted social media accounts that are interacting with yours, and you can privatize or hide your own. In connection with this, you should contact customer service for whatever social media platform you're being stalked on and talk to them about what your options are. Document all of the instances of stalking because uh, messages can be deleted. So you want to take screenshots of your messages or export the messages uh, so that if it comes to a, if you need to prove that the stalking happened in court, you have the evidence to do so. And finally, and this might be the first thing you do, you should maybe contact a lawyer and a lawyer can help you get either an order of protection or a no contact order that will uh, make sure that there are civil and criminal penalties for any continued contact. So now before I proceed any further, it's important to put this video in context. And I just want to basically show you one or part of a motion that is a part of the R. Kelly trial, right? And at least I believe it's so. Like someone sent this to me. So I'm really just reposting. I haven't really double checked this information, but I got it from a pretty good source. So I'm pretty confident that this was in the prosecutor's motion, right? So it reads, it's also disingenuous for the defendants to suggest that he has no means to go anywhere. He continues to have a significant network of individuals available to assist him. Indeed, many of those individuals attempt to do the defendant's bidding by regularly posting and appearing in videos on the internet and publishing on social media in support of the defendant and overtly trying to intimidate the defendant's accusers. Now, let me read that again. 
overtly trying to intimidate the defendant's accusers. Moreover, the defendant still has financial means to flee and commit obstruction. In the first quarter of 2020, alone, the defendant received over 200000 in royalty proceeds, right? So I thought it was important to basically show you this so you can see what the prosecutors are saying in the courtroom. Now, those people that are coming out and they're bashing me, saying that, you know, they thought I was cool and I'm just saying this because I'm getting a check. Let me be the first to tell you, I haven't really gotten any money for any of these videos that I've made over the past year. You know, so I just want to, you know, kill that lie. Well, well, wait a minute. I'm lying. I got maybe one or two donations from one person that liked my videos, but those donations were really small. So let me just make it clear. I'm being get, I'm getting little to no money off these videos that I'm making. With that said, though, and pushing all that other stuff aside, I think that if you're truly an R. Kelly supporter, you don't want to give the prosecutors more ammunition to go into federal court and say, hey, look, this is a recent posting on Azrael's blog and look at the type of stuff that they're saying. You don't want to give them that ammunition. Now, of course, you have freedom of speech and you have the right to go out there and say whatever you want to say with some exceptions. We're going to get into those exceptions uh, shortly. But for the most part, you have freedom of speech. You just have to be careful not to cross that line and turn that freedom of speech into cyberbullying. Now, cyberbullying is actually kind of funny because I actually did some research and I actually tried to find one federal statute on cyberbullying. And the best thing I was able to find was a statute that talked about telecommunications. And there's also another statute that talks about stalking. But none of those really cover cyberbullying. So cyberbullying is kind of a new frontier. And the internet basically makes the world a smaller place. And because of this and because cyberbullying is new, I think it's difficult for prosecutors or the legislators to basically draw the line from freedom of speech and where cyberbullying begins, right? You know, because with freedom of speech, you can come out and you can be offensive. I believe you can. Of course, I'm not a lawyer, so, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. But I did read information that basically says freedom of speech covers offensive language. So you just have to use your own judgment. Where do you draw the line from being or utilizing your freedom of speech and going over that line and basically becoming a cyber stalker or cyber bully, right? So you, you really just have to come to your own conclusions on where the lines are drawn. And if, if you can't do that, then you really need to go out there and talk to a lawyer so that, you know, you don't draw the line because... I think because there's no standard, federal standard on cyberbullying, and because the world is a smaller place because of the internet, you could potentially see a situation where one state basically has a very low standard in terms of cyberbullying, meaning that it's very easy to be prosecuted for cyberbullying, and you're living in another state where they have a high standard, meaning there's a very... A tough standard for being convicted. It is very hard to be even prosecuted for cyberbullying. I could see a situation where they try to use some long R type of jurisdiction to pull you all the way out of California and then, you know, drag you all the way to Chicago to accuse you of cyberbullying. I'm not saying that they can do that, but trust me, you don't want any parts of that. You don't want any parts of that because it's going to complicate your life and it's going to make your life difficult. And at least I wouldn't want it, you know, so, but like I said, you have freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want to say, but me, myself personally, you're not going to catch a non-lawyer out there bashing people, uh, stalking people. And I think, I think probably one of the standards is, is going, you, you, you probably should ask yourself, are you going to a person's internet accounts? Are you going from their Twitter account to their YouTube account to their Instagram account? And if you are going between all these accounts, are you doing so in a manner 
where it could be considered stalking? Are you doing so in a manner where any reasonable person would feel unsafe that this person keeps popping up? Now, it gets kind of tricky because it's social media and people probably want to hear what other people have to say about this stuff. So I admit I've gone from her Twitter account. I've gone to her YouTube account because that's what these tools are designed to do. But I'm also trying to be cognizant when I go to these accounts to make sure anything I say can't be construed or misconstrued as cyberbullying or cyber stalking. And for the most part, I don't really do hate. You know, I, I, I have my own personal opinions. I say what I want to say, but I make sure to keep the negativity at, at a minimum. Minimum, I try to keep my comments intelligent and factual. You know, maybe sometimes I don't do a good job at that. I'm not that smart of a guy, but I think you get the point. So, look, if, if you're a diehard R. Kelly supporter, don't listen to me. Do whatever you want to do and say whatever you want to say. But do know there are limitations to freedom of speech. And let's talk about some of those limitations. There, Believe it or not, there are some limitations to freedom of speech. And I'm not going to go over all the limitations. Maybe I'll make another video on that later. But one of the limitations to freedom of speech is incitement to suicide. You can incite someone to basically commit suicide, meaning you can't convince someone to commit suicide and then call it freedom of speech. It's just not going to work. This Recently, there was actually a case where a young lady uh, convinced her boyfriend, which I believe was her boyfriend, an ex-boyfriend, or maybe it was a friend. I can't remember all the details, but she com convinced him to commit suicide, and he did, and the prosecutor saw her text and basically prosecuted her. Now, I can't remember her name. Maybe I'll get a picture of her and post it on this video, and maybe I'll flash her name up on the video. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Who knows? But essentially, if you talk somebody into suicide, you can't go back and pull the freedom of speech card, right? Another limitation of freedom of speech is false statement of fact. Basically, I can't tell a lie and try to use the freedom of speech card, right? You know, so I can't say that I saw you in the alley having sex with a dog when you actually didn't do that uh, you can obviously come back and sue me for all types of slander and false light allegations you can come back and sue me for all that stuff so lying on someone isn't covered on uh, for freedom of speech another limitation of freedom of speech is obscenity and when i think of obscenity one of the or at least one of the most important and interesting parts of obscenity is pornography and it's kind of interesting because i thought pornography was 100 percent legal there's tons of porn sites out there in the u.s and around the world and the prosecutors aren't running around trying to prosecute those people so i'm interested to know whether or not you guys could give more information on pornography and freedom of speech i actually did some light research and it left me more confused than I originally started with. Maybe I'll do another video later, but I think the waters are kind of murky when it comes to obscenity and freedom of speech, right? So, of course, another limitation is child pornography. You can't be involved in child pornography in any form or fashion and then turn around and claim freedom of speech. Another limitation is going to be fighting words. I can't get on Twitter and you know tell somebody to go over someone else's house and beat the living daylight out of them because that would be pretty much considered inciting violence or fight inciting fighting words right another limitation is threaten the president you can't actually threaten the president there's actually one lady i forget who it was i think it was kathy griffin don't quote me but she held up a decapitated head of donald trump that's a big no-no I'm surprised she wasn't prosecuted. I think it was really, it maybe she was kind of in a gray area, but you officially can't threaten a president, right? So, I mean, there's tons of other limitations, speech owned by others, commercial speech, and then your employer actually is limited on what they can and cannot say to you. Uh, there, there's lots of them out there, you know, but the bottom line is, is that if you want to get on social media, 
and you want to exercise your right to freedom of speech, you're 100% uh, free to do so. Nobody can stop stop you. But just know that there are limitations out there. And of course, one of the major limitations is going to be cyber stalking and cyber bullying. And again, these lines aren't well defined, but I really wouldn't want to put myself in that situation where I could possibly be indicted or sued because I decided to get on the internet and basically wanted to run my mouth, right? You know, so you, you really want to be careful about the cyber bullying, cyber stalking. When I made that last video, I wasn't telling people to not speak their mind and say what they feel they want to say. What I'm basically trying to tell people is just be careful. Just be careful because I would hate to see you get arrested for cyber stalking or cyber bullying. And then also you need to be careful because if you're truly an R. Kelly supporter, you don't want to give the prosecutors ammunition to go into federal court and say, see, look, I told you so. They're still, you know, intimidating witnesses. They're still harassing witnesses. Why would you want to give them that ammo? You know, so, I mean, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the prosecutors, right? So that's it for this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.